Welcome to a new lesson, dear viewers. Today, let's look at seven cool phrases from this new, super cute and funny movie about the unlikely love between the British prince and the American president's son. Number one, to yuck my yum. Hey, here's an idea. How about we skip the party tonight and go do touristy things instead? No, are you crazy? I want to see Buckingham Palace, don't you? Okay, you've been yucking my yum all day. What's going on with you? Imagine you really like sushi, but your friend doesn't like it and says, yuck, ugh, disgusting. To yuck someone's yum means to criticize personal preferences. If someone says that what you like is gross or disgusting, you can say, don't yuck my yum. That means that don't criticize what I like because everybody's tastes and likes are different and that's okay. In this scene, Nora is surprised that Alex has been rejecting all of her ideas, so she says that Alex has been yucking her yum the whole day. Yuck my yum. So in this phrase, yuck is a verb and you can change it into different tenses. And my is a possessive adjective. So please be sure to also change that according to the person. For example, why do you always yuck his yum? Alex has been yucking her yum the whole day. Don't yuck my yum. Let's say the phrase from the movie scene together. Yum, y, yum, my yum my yum yucking my yum you've been you've been yucking you've been yucking my yum now pause the video and practice saying the phrase number two to take the cake darling you've done some pretty stupid things in your day but this takes the cake Oh, you hear that, Zara? He's opening with a joke. To take the cake means to win something, like a fun contest, a competition, but not always in a good way. Imagine a big cake as a prize. If something is really surprising, strange or extreme, like a story or weird situation, we say it takes the cake. It's like saying, wow, that's the most unbelievable thing I've heard. For example, everybody wore their costumes to the Halloween party, but Dave's clown costume was definitely the best. His costume took the cake. In this scene, Alex jokes that the incident with the cake takes the cake, meaning that he has done so many scandalous things before, but this one is the most outrageous one, the craziest one. But in this scene, it's also a fun wordplay because the scandal also involves a cake. So, the situation with a cake takes the cake. In this phrase, take is the verb and you can change it according to the tense that you want. The last question on the exam is taking the cake for being the most difficult one. Don't even worry, your juggling number will take the cake for the most daring performance for sure. Cake, cake, take the cake, take the cake. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number three, to hit it off. Hmm. Now, you've been mates since you met at the Melbourne Climate Conference several years back. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Uh, we hit it off instantly. Yeah, it's like we've known each other all our lives, right? Yep. Wonderful. To hit it off means to make friends or get along with someone very quickly, instantly. It's when you meet someone new and you both feel like you've been good friends for your whole lives. Maybe you have similar interests and your communication happens very naturally. It's like your personalities just hit and connect like magic. In this scene, Prince Harry is telling the reporter that he and Alex became friends immediately after they had met a few years ago. Alright, let's take a look at the use of this phrase, to hit it off. So, you can use it with the plural subject, so for example the names of two people, or the pronouns like we, they or you, the plural form. Despite Jake and Sarah's initial nervousness, the blind date turned out great as they hit it off from the start. 
When Mike and I met at the party, we instantly hit it off and spent the whole evening chatting. Or you can use it with a singular subject and then use the word with. At the networking event, I hit it off with a fellow entrepreneur who shared similar business goals. Okay, let's repeat Henry's phrase from the scene. We hit it off instantly. 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 Hit it off. So try to connect the words. Let's say together, hit it. Hit it. Hit it off. Hit it off. We hit it off. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number four, beef. Hey, Dad. Hey, mijo. I watched our committee hearing on the flight home. Yeah, you and three other people. You should be tougher on those agribusiness mofos. Well, maybe I can get you to push me to cake for me. What's your beef with him, anyway? I mean, he seems like a nice enough guy. All right, you probably know that beef is the meat from the cow. But why would two people have beef? Well, beef is also a slang for a little argument or a problem between people. Imagine two friends having a disagreement, so there is a beef between them. It's usually nothing serious, not like a big fight, just usually something small that might make them a bit annoyed with each other. In this scene, Alex's father asks him about the beef between him and the prince. What is their disagreement, as they always seem like they don't get along well? The word beef can be used as a noun, for example. The beef between the two actors was all over the tabloids, but they eventually settled their differences. The neighbors have been having the beef over the property line for years. But also, beef can be used as a verb. The two rappers have been beefing in their lyrics, throwing insults back and forth in their songs. The athletes beefed during the press conference, exchanging heated words before their upcoming match. What's your beef with him? With him. What's your? What's your? Beef. Beef. What's your beef with him? Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number five, on the nose. You don't seem like the kind of person that would name their dog David. Well, he's named after Bowie. Wait, seriously? Hmm. That's way cooler. Why not just call him Bowie then? It's a bit on the nose, don't you think? On the nose means you're exactly right about something. Imagine guessing the right answer in a game. That's being on the nose. It's like hitting the bull's eye when you're playing the darts. In this scene, Henry tells Alex that his dog, David, is named after David Bowie. So Alex asked Henry why he didn't just name the dog Bowie. And Henry says that that would be a bit on the nose, so that would be a bit too exact, too obvious. On the nose. This phrase is always like that, you don't need to change it in any way. So you cannot say on the noses or on a nose, you have to keep all the three words exactly the same without changing. The weather forecast was on the nose, it predicted rain and sure enough it started pouring shortly after. The singer's pitch during the performance was flawless, hitting every note right on the nose. Nose, nose. The letter S in this word makes the sound Z. Nose, the nose. On the nose, on the nose. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number six, to be even. I want you to have some part of me until you can have all of me again. Now we're even. To be even is like when you both have the same number of points or wins or when you don't owe each other anything, when things are in balance. It can be used in negative situations. For example, a friend hits you for whatever reason, so then you hit that friend back, so now you're even. That friend hit you once, you hit that friend back once, so now everything is in balance. 
or it can be used in positive situations. For example, like in this movie scene, where Henry gives Alex a ring to be remembered, so Alex gives Henry a necklace in return and says that now they are even. Now each of them has something to remember the other person. You can use the phrase to be even with plural subjects. So again, for example, two people, the names or the pronouns, we, they, you, the plural form. For example, I helped Sarah set up the birthday party for her daughter in return for her helping me move. So she and I are even now. Our family and the neighbors next door were even after we returned them the tools. But also you can use the phrase to be even with a singular subject and the word with. Tell you what, buy me dinner this Friday, that way you'll be even with me for the money I lent you. We're even, 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 we're, we're, and try to connect together. We're even, we're even. Now pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number seven and the last one for today's lesson, to stand up for myself. You know, it's not too late to get out of here and fly to the Maldives. Tempting. But I think it's time I stood up for myself. To stand up for someone means to defend or support a person who is being criticized or attacked. So if you stand up for yourself, it means that you show the world that you are your own defender, your own champion. If someone is attacking you, you can stand up for yourself by not feeling down, you don't accept the bad treatment and you can even talk back to that person to show that what they are doing is not okay. Here, Henry and Alex are about to meet the king of the country, Henry's grandpa. While the idea is very scary and they anticipate being not understood or criticized, Henry says that it is time for him to stand up for himself. So this time, he's not going to run away and he will defend himself in front of his grandpa. To stand up for myself. Well, in this phrase, stand is the verb and you can change it into different tenses. And you can also change the word myself. So myself is for I, but you can use herself, himself, themselves, you know, yourselves, okay? Change according to the person that you're talking about. I stood up for myself and addressed the unfair situation. She refused to be treated poorly and chose to stand up for herself. John told me that this time he will stand up for himself instead of accepting the harsh comments from the boss. As a team, we knew we had to stand up for ourselves to make our voices heard. Okay, let's say the Henry's phrase from the scene together. It's time I stood up for myself. For myself. For myself. I stood up. Stood up. Connect together. Stood up. It's time I stood up for myself. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Okay, and now it is time for you to do some exercises and check how well you understood the material. And remember, if you need extra time, you can always pause the video. Exercise number one. Match these phrases to their definitions. Exercise number two, which sentences are grammatically correct? So here I'm already giving you a hint, which sentences? So there are several that are correct and several that are not correct. Read the sentences carefully. Alright, well, let us know which phrase takes the cake for you. 
Now, hopefully, you know the meaning of these cool slangs and idioms and can use them on the nose. Don't forget to practice using these phrases. You can start by writing your examples in the comments down below and we can check them for you. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to never miss a fun and quick English lesson with PDQ English.